Hello, good evening everyone. A blessed, blessed day to you and I believe that you are here ready to receive from the Holy Spirit of God. So let's joyfully uh, prepare our hearts to receive what the Spirit of God has to serve on our plates. I hope that you are hungry and your appetite levels are high to receive from the Spirit. So let's pray and start. Father, we want to say thank you for this day and this time that you have given us to gather together to study your word. Feed every hungry heart. You will reveal your secrets to those who are hungry and desperate to know more. Thank you, Father, for this privilege that you have given us to sit at your feet and learn. Help me to teach. I depend on you, Holy Spirit. Open our eyes of understanding to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Okay, part 22. King, kingdom, and keys. We are moved on to keys very soon. We will end this study and move on to a new topic. I'm trying my best to wrap this up, but still some more to uh, reveal to you. Some more um, the Spirit of the Lord wants to speak to you on this topic okay so let's go to matthew chapter 13 verse 12 i believe last week we finished so let's start from 13 matthew chapter 13 verse 11 matthew chapter 13 verse 11 what does it say <coughs> he replied because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. So, Jesus is looking at his disciples and is saying, you are a special group of people. On this earth, you are a special group of people because the secrets, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom is only given to you all not to them. So the disciples were a privileged people. They were a highly favored people. Okay. So why Jesus um, told that to disciples is because they left their, their business, they left their family, they left their uh, children, they left their everything to follow Jesus. This is the reason that Jesus that the secret, the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom is being given to you. Because they have showed their desperation for Jesus. Are you getting church? And that is why Jesus said, I'm going to reveal to you the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. You decided to follow me and be with me. I'm going to reveal everything to you. But to them, it's not given. Why? They are still not decided. So precious people of God, this kingdom belongs to Jesus. He's the king of this kingdom. And if you want the secret of the kingdom, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom, you need to please the king. Because it is he who reveals the knowledge of the secrets. So, you need to show him that I am desperate. You and I cannot say, precious people of God, that we have learned all the secrets, knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. Because it's progressive. The, the Holy Spirit keeps revealing kingdom keys according to the, uh, the need of the hour. So, no one can say that I have learned all the keys of the kingdom. Or no one can say that I have learned all the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. It is progressive. It keeps evol evolving. And according to the need, according to the situation, according to the complications, the keys are differs. So, the more we continue to show Jesus and consistently walk with the Holy Spirit of God, the keys are revealed to us periodically and according to our needs. The precious people of God, 
if you are hungry to know show him your sacri sacrifice i want to, if you want this write it down very important the access to know kingdom secrets requires sacrifice write it in the comment section you know the access to know kingdom secrets requires sacrifice that is why today many in the christendom does not have the secrets no knowledge of the secrets why they don't want to do it show any sacrifice they don't want to sacrifice anything but they want the knowledge of the secrets but access to know kingdom secrets requires sacrifice if you're hungry to know show him your sacrifice he will reveal show him your hunger and say lord i'm hungry to know this knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom show your sacrifice sometime it takes fasting and praying for hours sometimes takes serious time of devotion of the word of god sometimes it takes uh, going out to serve someone so you need to show your hunger and demonstrate it through your sacrifice so that lord says okay my child is serious about my kingdom let me reveal the knowledge of the secrets amen if you don't believe in miracles you will not see miracles if you don't believe in speaking in tongues you will not speak in tongues if you don't believe in the fruit of the holy spirit you will not see the fruit of the holy spirit if you don't believe in the gifts of the holy spirit you will not see the gift of the holy spirit according to your hunger it shall be served to you you know matthew chapter 13 verse 12 okay matthew chapter 13 verse 12 whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance whoever whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them so read it in context read this scripture in context verse 11 because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you but not to them whoever has will be given more that means jesus is saying the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom will be given more to those who have because those who have are the ones who have shown desperation and uh, desire and they have showed their sacrifice so that god has given them and they will be given more but whoever does not have that means they have no interest in knowing the secret knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom therefore they do not have and even what they have will be taken from them serious statement precious people of god serious statement that means those who are so um what would i say who does not treat the secrets of the knowledge of the secret of secrets of the kingdom as so important they despise like esau despised his birthright and god was angry with him and even god it's, it's so i'm so surprised to hear this word from god's mouth saying i hate esau a god who is love but he says i hate esau why he he, he treated his birthright with contempt something that was not important so those who does not have can i have the scripture shown those who does not have means that they have no interest they they don't care whether they have it or not it is not so important to them that's why you precious people of god you know many who come on sundays or many who watch on sunday sermons they don't watch on watch or they don't participate 
in the Bible studies, those who serve in the Father's house. I don't see them participate in um, Bible studies. Why? No interest. There's no passion. There's no hunger. Do you, do you think because they're serving in the church, God will reveal secrets to them? No. Those who sometimes sit in the pew are more mature and who have more keys than those who are serving. Because why? God serves keys. God gives keys to those who have hunger. And to those who does not have TNA kat ganno. This fellow, no interest at all. Whatever I have given, let me take it. Give it to the one who is hungry. Dangerous place to be in, precious people of God. If you're walking in the kingdom, there is no lukewarmness. There is no lukewarm status in the kingdom of God. Are you with me? God said, if you're lukewarm, I would rather spit you out. Because there is no, you have to either be hot or cold. No lukewarmness. So, if you do not show hunger for God's kingdom and the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom, God says, I'll take it even whatever you have. And give it to somebody who have. Why? He's showing more hunger. I hope that you are with me. I, don't get angry with me. I'm, I'm speaking the mind of God. How God thinks. The scripture is the mind of God. How God thinks is what he has put it in writing and given to us. So these are not my words. Whoever has will be given more. And they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have. Even the little secrets that they know, that also will be taken. That's why there is no revelation. Keys are revelation of the Holy Spirit of God. Because keys are principles. And those are revealed by the Holy Spirit of God. So, if you don't have hunger, there is no revelation. How much you know, you read Bible, is like a duty for you. There is no passion for Bible. There's no hunger for the Word of God. It is it's like a torture for you to read the Bible. So, uh, you read Bible because you think, if I don't read Bible, God will get angry with me. And today I'll get punished if I don't read today's quotas. If I don't read the Bible, the Bible reader's plan or something they have, one year Bible reading plan. If I don't read today's uh, quota, God will punish me. I may fall and may have an accident. Or I'll have a bad day at, at an office or uh, something like that. Because of that you read the Bible, not because you have passion. You will have no revelation. You will have not have keys. Even the one key if you have that also will be taken. Because God serves secrets, knowledge of the secrets to the ones who are hungry. Say, I'm hungry for the knowledge of his secrets. I'm hungry for the knowledge of his secrets. The more you receive, the more will be given. That's why we should never think we know it all. In the kingdom, we should never come to a place saying, I know it all. Because that's, when you come to that place, we must always say, it's not enough, I'm more hungry. Not enough, I'm more hungry. And the more will be revealed. You know, if you think you don't need God, He will avoid you. You know, certain churches are confined to books. They have confined the Holy Spirit of God to book a book. The Holy Spirit of God has to work within the framework of this book. They don't go grow beyond that book. They are boxed God within that book. But God is huge. It's so great. So don't try to box God. Don't try to frame God. You know, some frame God and put on the wall. <laughs> you cannot frame God. 
he is he is he is almighty he is omnipotent omnipresent so if you don't want more even what you have will be taken precious people of god truth will pursue only those who want him truth will pursue even truth are keys truth are keys in the kingdom truth are keys so truth will pursue after those who are hungry god wants to do certain things in your life but he wants you to believe first believing is a key in the kingdom another big key in the kingdom of god is believing i told you while teaching i will reveal keys you need to catch it and write it down believing is a fundamental key in the kingdom of god now the principle of believing in the world is touch feel and see that's the principle of believing in the world you have to touch you have to feel it you have to see it then believe in the kingdom the principle of believing is you don't see it you don't feel it you don't touch it but you believe so believing is a fundamental key in the kingdom of god believing is more than saying i believe did you hear me believing is more than uh, saying i believe i believe god i believe god if you really believe you will start preparing for it that is believing did you hear me believing is not saying lord i believe lord i believe if you believe for something start preparing for it you know when 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 after marriage when we didn't have child for 5 years i i used to say lord i believe god i believe then god said prepare for it prepare for it that is believing by a cot by the child's pillow by the blanket by the audio clone whatever that is believing not just saying believing and sitting and waiting if you believe that you're going to have this prepare for it that's belief in god's eyes you start organizing your life for it when you say i believe when you believe a debt free life okay you will learn to live within means that is preparing for it are you getting what i'm saying if you believe for a debt free life stop living beyond your means prepare organize yourself let's go to verse 13 to 15 that is why i speak to them in parables now you understand why jesus is saying that is why i speak to them in parables why they don't have anger Jesus said those who have more will be given to them those who don't have even what they have will be taken from them that is why i speak to them in parables to whom does jesus speak in parables those who do not have hunger so those who do not have hunger and passion to follow after jesus the bible will always be a parable they can't understand they will never have revelation If you don't have hunger for Jesus you're wasting your time with the word of God. If you don't have passion and hunger for Jesus reading the Bible you're wasting your time because it will look it will sound a parable for you. That is why Jesus is saying that is why I speak to them in parables. Those seeing they do not see Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. This is what's happened to those who are not hungry for Jesus. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah: "You will be ever hearing, but never understanding; you will be ever seeing, but never perceiving; 
perceiving, for this people's hearts has become closed. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Am I right, Sean? Am I pronouncing? Calloused. Calloused. What is calloused is, have you seen uh, 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 in, your, in your body, uh, uh, a, a part of your skin has become hard? You know, uh, say, say like uh, a corn, you know, in that place becomes very hard. So if you touch that place, there is no feelings. It's a hardened place. There is no feeling. There is no life in that place. That part of skin has become thick and hard. In the same way, many Christians' hearts have become so hard. They're, they're very thick. And uh, whatever God wants to get through to them, they can't, it, it cannot penetrate precious people of God. That's what Jesus is saying. For these people's hearts has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their hearts, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. So, where are you going to understand the kingdom keys? Is in your heart. So, when your heart has become so hard, thick skin, hard skin, nothing you hear, you can't understand. You hear, Sundays you hear sermons, Fridays you hear the Bible study, Wednesdays you hear the Bible study, but there's no revelation of keys. Why? Your heart is hardened. This is what Isaiah was prophesying. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. There's no revelation of keys. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For these people's hearts have become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. And they have closed their eyes. Are you with me, precious people of God? Their hearts are like thickened skin, hard skin. Some people never believe. This is how thick the skin of their heart. In other words, in other words, you may you may not agree with me. In other words, don't waste your time with people who have calloused heart. Jesus is saying. With those people, I speak in parables. Jesus is saying, huh? not I'm saying. Go with me to verse um, uh, 13. This is why I speak to them in parables. So, when you find people who have no passion for Jesus, they have only their intention is to argue this word of God. They don't want to believe this word of God. They want to argue with this word of God. Don't sit them with hours and keep arguing the word. Tell them a story and move on. Are you with me, church? Don't sit with them. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Psalm 23 says. This is You are wasting your time. Jesus said, I, I, I tell them a parable and I move on. Jesus is saying, tell a story, nice story to them and move on. Don't keep wasting your time with people who have callous heart. They are artistic skin. Their hearts are hardened. And you just pray for them. Don't argue and try to prove the word with them. Pray for them that their hearts will be changed. Amen? They need healing. Not argument, they need healing. And when I say this, some faces come in front of your eyes. Pray for them, then not argue with them. You know, if I know somebody calls me and they say, Pastor, I have a doubt. A few minutes I talk to them, I know their intention is not, they have hunger for Jesus, passion for Jesus. Their hunger is not for revelation. Just to prove me wrong and prove the word of God wrong, I tell them a story and I keep. I don't waste time. 
because Jesus, I want to follow the example of Jesus because time is precious. But pray for them. Pray for them. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes because they see my goodness and your ears because they hear. Say, it's me. It's me. It's me. My eyes see. My ears hear because I am hungry for him. I show my sacrifice to him. Even sitting one hour through on Wednesdays and Friday is showing your hunger for Jesus. Showing your thirst for Jesus. Your sacrifice. You're separating, sacrificing your time and investing it in the word of God. We sometimes we do not know how blessed we are because we don't consider these things as blessing but Jesus says if your eyes can see the spiritual truth and your ears can hear the revelation of the Holy Spirit of God you are the most blessed person because not my words are huh? blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Jesus says, if you can hear spiritual keys, if you can hear the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom, if you can see with your spiritual eyes the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom, you are blessed, says Jesus. Say, I am blessed. Because I can hear. I can see. I am blessed. You know, when you let go things that things and come to God, you are not blessing God. Sometimes we think, Lord, I left this. Lord, I left that. Oh, Lord, I let go of that and I am come to you. And we think you are blessing God. No. It's a blessing for you. It's a blessing for me. That's why Jesus said, blessed if you have left everything and come. I will give you more. If you left houses, I will give more houses. If you left your lands, I will give more land. Here and also in eternity. How That's how blessed we are. Verse 17. Matthew chapter 13, verse 17. For truly I tell you, Many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So Jesus is looking at the disciples and saying, you guys are seeing what many Old Testament saints waited to see. You're seeing me. If you are seeing Jesus, you are the blessed. You are the most blessed if your eyes are fixed on Jesus. Because Jesus is saying, disciples, these prophets and Old Testament saints long to see this day or long to see me. But they didn't have that privilege. But you are seeing me and they long to hear what you are hearing. What? The kingdom message. What the disciples were hearing was the kingdom message and what they were seeing is Jesus. What the disciples were hearing were the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom which were not given to the Old Testament saints. But to you, you are hearing it and you are hearing it from me. Are you with me precious people of God? So see Jesus and hear about kingdom. Let your eyes behold Jesus and let your ears hear the message of the kingdom. That's what Jesus brought, the message of the kingdom. He brought himself and the message of the kingdom. If you can see Jesus and if you can hear the kingdom message, you are the most blessed. 
read verse 18 and 19. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. And anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. So, precious people of God, the message of the kingdom, underline it in your Bible. This is the seed sown. What is the seed that is sown? The message of the kingdom. You know, seed is not just any word or any words or about anything. It is the words, the message about the kingdom. Read it again. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears what message? The message about the kingdom. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it. Who does not understand it? The one who has the callous heart, thick heart, hardened heart. And who are those people who does not have hunger for Jesus? Passion for Jesus. Oh, hear me, precious people of God. You can be a Christian, you can be born again for 20 years, you can be part of a good Pentecostal, Bible-believing, full gospel church, and you can be serving, you can be an elder, you can be a, a trustee, you can be anyone, a, a counselor, uh, you can be an usherer, you can be uh, serving in the church, and still lose the first love that you had for Jesus. This is where I am. I, I don't want to lose the first love. What is first love? The honest that we have for God. You know, when you first law, first saw your, you know, your girlfriend, oh, stars started going in around you know head, and you you were like flying, and you know you're in a different world. That is first love. <laughs> And some of us have lost that first love that the first day that you came to Jesus, tears were pouring down and you, 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 you forgot that you are in a, in a meeting and you forgot that people are around you. You are lost and you are crying and saying, Jesus, I desperately need you. I don't want a life without you. And that day was somewhere in 20, um, say, 2008. You know, I came to know the Lord in 1994. I got saved. My life has been, been backsliding and things like that. But after backsliding, the last backsliding was <laughs> 2004 to 2010, six years. But then when I ever came back, I've fallen in more in love with Jesus because the way he treated me after I came back, after being away from him for six years. Now, I, my prayer is, Lord, I don't want to lose that first love. Because the moment we lose that first love, our prayer life goes down. Something else replaces it. And then, our passion for the word of God goes down. Our hunger for Jesus goes down. And then our hearts become hardened. And then we can't understand the secrets, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. And then when there is no revelation in your life, your Christian life become a, becomes a monotonous, boring walk. It's a dangerous place to be in and that's what Jesus called Jesus calls fallen from the first love. If you are in that status, today you need to go down on your knees and repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, bring me back to that first love. And what you need to do is, if your heart has got hardened, precious people of God, how, how can that hardened heart can be made soft again? I will take your stony heart and give you a heart of flesh, says the Lord. So how does it happen? Push yourself into the presence of God. Sit in God's presence and say, Lord, layer by layer, layer by layer, take away the thick skin, 
You know, when you feel so dry in your prayer life, when Bible reading becomes so boring and you can't sit one hour in God's presence, you have slowly drifting away from your first love and your hearts are becoming closed. And what you need to do is sit in His presence. Force yourself into His presence. And then when you sit and say, take my stony heart, the Holy Spirit will remove layers of thick skin from your heart and when your soft heart is then exposed to the holy spirit that's when you know that ignition of fire happens then steer starts to fall down and then now you're connecting with the holy spirit revelation starts to flow in bible becomes your food and you cannot be without it and uh, sitting in God's presence you yearn for, long for and then God sees your sacrificial time of sitting in his presence for hours and he reveals the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. If you don't come into that place, whatever kingdom message that you hear, it will be snatched away. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it. Now I explained how do you come to the place of does not understand it. And if you are in that place of does not understand it, every time you hear the message of the kingdom, it's snatched away, snatched away. And you wonder why I do not have the secrets of the kingdom, secrets, knowledge of the secret of the kingdom. It is not the problem with the kingdom, it's the problem with your heart. Your heart has become so it is not any seed, any words, precious people of God. It is the word about the kingdom. It is the message that we must spread in the world, the, the, the message of the kingdom. And Jesus says does not understand the evil one comes and snatches away what was snow, sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. So the evil one comes, precious people of God. Hear me, hear me well. In other words, the devil comes only after the message of the kingdom. The devil is afraid only of the message of the kingdom. He comes immediately, get rid of it. What? The message of the kingdom. Why? The message of the kingdom is what reveals the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. What is the secrets? Keys. So, if I teach you about how to prosper, ten ways to prosper, the devil will, I also love to listen, man. And he will sit and listen with you in the classroom. Why he is not bothered? <laughs> but how to get rich in 50 days? Preach on, Pastor Raja. Preach on, the devil will say. <laughs> but when I speak about the kingdom of God, and he will target you also. No wonder some of you are going through challenges since I, ever, ever since I started uh, this study on kingdom. King, kingdom and keys. Because the moment you hear the message of the kingdom, the devil knows now the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom is going to be revealed to Sean. So he will come. He will come. He will come and quickly snatch away. So if your heart is hardened and thickened, snatching it away is easy for him. And revelation is stolen away. Keys are stolen away. You preach about prosperity, he will just leave you alone. But kingdom, he will come after. Hmm. So I'm teaching the word, the kingdom message, And the devil will be agitated.
why the devil wants us to go back to some other messages which are motivating motivational message he doesn't he doesn't mind but kingdom message he knows there is knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom emotional messages are good but they will not deliver you they will not give you keys the devil does not bother even if you study about healing because if you if you if you get a healing tomorrow he will give you another sickness so he does not bother about studying about healing studying about prosperity studying about money all of that is yes we need to have knowledge but if you don't have the knowledge of the kingdom of god there are no secret keys that will be revealed to you so precious people of god this is why jesus preached on kingdom jesus mainly preached on kingdom have you seen that which position yourself to access all the other things because i have taught you in the kingdom is everything is installed everything is inbuilt in the kingdom so if you after the kingdom and if you operate into the kingdom and operate in the kingdom everything healing blessing things will flow but if you forego the kingdom and go after blessing healing things you will be eternally after it and never be satisfied because the devil will give blessing and take away your healing he will give you a healing and take away your blessing the devil will keep rotating things and you're eternally after it but when you go after the kingdom and have the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom keys you will have everything intact amen so don't live for blessing blessing comes and go don't live for uh, to settle bills don't live to settle bills if you settle one bill tomorrow there will be another bill settle for kingdom precious people of god which is a lifestyle and satan hates this message you know go with me to matthew chapter 16 i will show you an ideal example Matthew chapter 16 verse 7 to 10 Matthew chapter 16 verse 7 to 10 They discussed this oh watch this huh beautiful They discussed this among themselves and said it is because we didn't bring any bread Now Jesus was talking about the 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 teachings or the doctrines of the Pharisees Let's take it in context. Okay. Let's take it from verse 5 Sean. When they went across the lake the disciples forgot to take bread. Okay. Be careful. Jesus said to them, be on your guard against the yeast of Pharisees and Sadducees. That's he's talking about the teachings of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now the, dis- the disciples are discussing. Mm. They discussed this among themselves and said, Peter, I think he's telling us that we didn't bring bread. One basket you would have put into the uh, boat. No? Next verse. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, You of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many basketful you gathered? So Jesus saying, "Let the here and there, man. You're still worried about the bread, no? 
and to remember how I multiplied the five, five, you know, five loaves to feed five thousand. Where is it? Read about the bread. Now this is how many Christians are. Sometimes you're so worried about the things, the blessings, the bills, than the kingdom. Jesus will look at you and say the same thing. Can't you remember that you read in the Bible that I fed the 5,000, not 5,000, it would have been 20,000 with five loaves and two fish. Be kingdom focused. Don't be after bills, blessings, and the healing. Healing is spontaneous. Healing is, is uh, you know, divine health, I would say, is a manifestation of the kingdom. So Jesus is rebuking the disciples and saying, why are you worried about bread? You're thinking about bread. I'm talking about the teachings of the Pharisees and Sadducees. You're still worried about bread. Can't you remember I multiplied Philo? Be focused on the kingdom message. Be focused on the kingdom so that kingdom will reveal knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom so that you're far above than the others. You are, you are not like the world. Amen. You know, see, being worried about blessing is dangerous. That's what Jesus is saying. Why are you worried about blessing? Why are you worried about how am I going to eat? It's dangerous. Having sauce with you and worried about resource. Today, many Christians we are worried about Sometimes, including myself, we are worried about resource. Why we have forgotten about the source? Kingdom is the source. Blessings are the resources. So, you, why, why do we have to go for the blessing than the resource? Why do we have to go after the resources than the source? Kingdom is the source. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Because the kingdom has it all. But if you go for the blessing, you're going after the resource and not the source. Let this digest in us. If we go after resource, we will ever be going after it eternally the kingdom I, I, as I call it the law of life well, I, I said before God created Adam he created everything what Adam needed the kingdom God wants to provide for his children make sure that what we need is there but he wants us to focus kingdom first Show him how much passionate and hungry we are for him. So that he can reveal the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. Precious people of God, the Bible says, It is the Father's pleasure to give you what? The kingdom. It is not the Father's pleasure to give you your needs and wants. It's your father's pleasure is to give you the kingdom where kingdom has your needs and needs and wants in it. So when you find the kingdom, everything else provided, you know. This is why we read the parable that Jesus saw. The man saw a field and found a treasure in it and he went and sold everything and bought the field which is the kingdom. And then Jesus said in another parable that a man saw pearl, precious, valuable pearl. He sold everything and bought it. Kingdom is the key. If we, if we in, enter the kingdom and understand the kingdom and operate in the kingdom, my precious people of God, God will make sure that every need of you is provided. If you're with me, shout Amen. 
Oh, I hope that you are understanding. My time is up. God has some plans for you that you don't have. Yes, God has plans for you. I, my plans are to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I have plans for you, son. I have plans for you, daughter. And those plans are to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give hope and a future. Seek after my kingdom. Seek after my kingdom. Show me your hunger for me. Show me your sacrifice for me. Then I will reveal you the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom. And if you don't have hunger for Jesus, you are in a state of where you have lost your first love. Your heart's been hardened. Thick skin it has turned into. Therefore you do not have hunger for Jesus, passion for Jesus, desire for the kingdom, and whatever kingdom message you hear is snatched away. You, know, you don't have keys. This is the place, this is the status of many Christians today. And we wonder why I go to church, I serve in the church, uh, I, I, I've been born again for many years and why things are not happening, why don't I have keys? This is the reason, precious people of God. Say, Lord, let be your way, not my way. Lord, let it be your way, not my way, Father. He has plans. Okay, so, another one more key that is very fundamental in the kingdom is obedience. Obedience is a key. Belief is a key. The kingdom. I showed you what is belief, not just saying I believe. Now, obedience is the key. That's why Samuel looked at Saul, the king, and said, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Why? Samuel has disobeyed and brought some choice animals from the, uh, from the spoil that after winning a war, God said, You must destroy all the items of the enemy. Don't bring anything back. That was the command of God to Saul the king. He won the battle, but he destroyed everything, but kept the choice, good sheep and animals, uh, sheep and goats or whatever, cattle, he brought it back. And Samuel comes and asks, what have you done? No, 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 I brought them, I can sacrifice to God. God does not want your sacrifice when you have disobeyed him. Obedience precedes the sacrifice. So sacrifice is useless to God when you have disobeyed him. Praying and reading the word and, and doing, serving and all of that is good. But if you have disobeyed him and doing that, that sacrifice is detestable to God. Obedience is a fundamental key in the kingdom. When God speaks, obey. Say, Lord, give me the grace to obey you. Lord, give me the grace to obey you as you speak. When God speaks, let us not reason out. Let us obey. It's a fundamental kingdom key. And you know, if, if you miss this key, you ain't going to get many keys from God. This is a fundamental key in the kingdom. Obedience. Obedience leads to many other keys of the kingdom. Amen. I better stop there and take it forward from next week and a uh, lot to share. lot to share. I don't want to uh, go to the next point and abruptly stop it. Precious people of God, I believe that you learned something today. Uh, don't lose your first love for God. When you have first love, 
you always want to talk to God. When you have first love, you always want to fellowship with Him. When you have first love, you want to hang around Him. When you have first love, the things of God is your interest. When you have first love, you love to do things for God. Just remember the first love that you had for your girlfriend. You want to talk for hours. You want to be around her or be around him. Buy things for him or her. Go out on eating, spending time. What is her interest or his interest is your interest. First love, sign of first love. And if you have lost your first love for God, these signs will disappear. And God becomes a boring affair. If you are in that place, today you need to repent and say, Lord, I want to return back to my first love. This is what happened to the Ephesian church. You know, if you read the book of Ephesians, Paul writes to the Ephesian church and says, God is amazed about your love that you have towards God and towards his people. After many years later, Jesus speaks to John and says, Ephesian church has fallen from first love. See, they've been so, God is admiring their love for him and for his people. Now after many years, they have fallen from first love. This, this happens to every Christian if you don't watch out. And when that happens, you have it becomes hard. God, the hunger, passion that you have for God is gone. And the sacrifices that you make for God is not seen in your life. If you find time, if it, everything if it is convenient to you, you will do things for God. But if not, you will never sacrifice and do anything. You're in, a, you're in a place of fallen from first love. Your heart has become hardened. Repent. Repent this morning. That's what God said to the Ephesian church in Revelation chapter 3. Repent. Chapter 2 and 3. He talks to seven churches. And Ephesian church was one of that church that has fallen from first love. Repent and say, Lord... I need to return back to that first love so that God can reveal the knowledge of the secrets of his kingdom. Father, this morning, help us to come back to that first love. Lord, we earnestly ask you, Holy Spirit of God, ignite a fire in our hearts and remove those layers of hard skin so that we can come back to first love. Lord, I pray that every son and daughter who is under the sound of your voice and those who are going to listen later, I pray that their hearts will be, stony hearts will be taken and heart of flesh will be given. And I pray a fresh fire will be ignited in our hearts, Lord, to love you, Jesus, to love you, to love you, to love you, to come to that first place of love. I repent. If I have fallen from first love, I repent God and I say I'm sorry if I have fallen from first love. I want to come to that place of loving you wholeheartedly. And Lord, the more I have hunger for you and passion for you and love for you, the knowledge of the secrets, the keys of the kingdom are mine, Father. You will reveal them to me. My motive is not to get the keys for coming to you. My motive is to love you, God. Love you passionately. Thank you, Father. May many lives be transformed and changed today by this word. May many come, repent and come to the first love. Ask the Holy Spirit. Seek the help of the Holy Spirit continuously to return back to your first love for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of this study. This Friday, I'm starting a new Bible study called Spiritual Undercover. Be there. Important study. A lot of things the Spirit of the Lord wants to speak. 
and reveal a very, very important study, Spiritual Undercover. Hoping to see all of you on Friday. Have a blessed week. And if you're not registered for the conference, if, if you're part of the Father's House family, and if you're not registered for the Finishing Well conference happening this Saturday, coming Saturday, uh, please do register because tomorrow uh, we are closing registration. So I want you to hurry up and register. Don't wait till last moment because we need to finalize logistics and so many other things. So tomorrow is the last day. Please do register if you are not registered for the Finishing Well conference. Very, very important conference. God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed week. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. But who can stop the Lord Almighty?
There's no place I would rather